Well, happy Thursday morning to you, everyone, and welcome back to Morning Musings. Hey, <clears throat> just reading a brand new book here by William Bell entitled The 23rd Psalm, The Good Shepherd in the Temple of God. I'm going to be telling you more about this later. Absolutely wonderful book. That one of the things that William says in this book is so important to understand. And that is, eschatology is not about the elimination of evil from the world. It is about providing the temple for sanctuary from the evil. Now that's not a quote, but it's such a marvelous and important concept for us to grasp about eschatology. Uh, and again, I'll be telling you more about it in the very, very near future and how you can get yourself a copy. You, you will not look at the 23rd Psalm in the same way once you get this book and you read it. Okay, <clears throat> we are talking about the nature of the kingdom of God. We are told that while the kingdom has been established in its uh, in infancy on the day of Pentecost, for instance, and was growing in the first century, we're still looking for the full bloom of the kingdom. In my three formal debates on this issue with Joel McDermott, Harold Eberly, and Steve Gregg, and those debates are available on my website, but... Each of these men <clears throat> affirmed that, yes, the kingdom was established in the first century. And it was established as a spiritual reality. But we're looking for the physical manifestation at the second coming of Christ in a physical body to rule in a physical kingdom on earth. Well, <clears throat> that must mean then that if, that if we can find prophecies of the coming of the Lord in the day of the establishment of the kingdom, and those prophecies posit that coming of the Lord in the kingdom in AD 70, then that may, and if that coming of the Lord's already happened, in other words, <clears throat> and if the Lord did not come physically, bodily, and restore the physical earth, that must mean that the amillennial and the postmillennial views are false. Okay, I shared with you yesterday a little bit of a, about Isaiah. <clears throat> Isaiah chapters 2 through 4 are one united harmonious prophecy. It is a prophecy of the last days, consummating in the great day of the Lord. The day of the Lord when the Lord would arise to shake the earth mightily, Isaiah 2, 19 and following. Here's what I want you to see from Isaiah chapters 2 through 4. What you need to do, get your Bible out, laying it, lay it in front of you, and beginning with Isaiah 2, 19 and 9 through 21, take note of the references to in that day in the ensuing reading, all the way through chapter 3, all the way through chapter 4. Because what you will find is that there are several references to in that day. And those are references to the antecedent discussion of what? The day of the Lord. So here we have the last days and the great day of the Lord consummating the last days, thus the kingdom. So if the kingdom arrives in full power, glory, and bloom <clears throat> at the great day of the Lord, and if Isaiah shares with us the establishment of the kingdom and it's coming in full power and glory at the great day of the Lord, then if we can identify the great day of the Lord of Isaiah chapters 2 through 4 as already passed, then guess what? That falsifies the amillennial and the postmillennial views of a, of a future kingdom. Okay, look at this. We've already shown you that the day of the Lord of Isaiah chapter 2, 19 to 21, is when men could flee to the mountains. That can't happen at any so-called end of time. That's over in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Point number two, Isaiah chapter, chapter 3 in that day, guess what? It would be a time 
of famine. Really? We're supposed to believe that the coming of the Lord at the so-called end of time is a time of famine? In that day, verses 13 and following, would be when the Lord would arise, go back to chapter 2, 19 and following, the Lord would arise to judge His people. Verses 18 and following, it would be when the men of Jerusalem would fall by the edge of the sword, which Jesus echoes in Luke 21, 24, predicting the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. In that day would be when ten women or seven women would take hold of one man. That's in the day of the Lord. In that day is when the branch of the Lord would be revealed. Well, who's the branch? We know who the branch is. So here's the coming of the branch of the Lord. And now look at verse 4. In that day would be when the Lord would purge the blood guilt of Jerusalem. He would save the remnant. But again, he would purge the blood guilt of Jerusalem by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of fire. Okay, now wait a minute. So here's the day of the Lord, the coming of the branch in power and glory, and it would be when Jerusalem would be judged for shedding innocent blood. Hmm. Did Jesus have something to say about the time when all of the blood of all of the righteous all the way back to creation would be avenged and would be judged? Yes, he did in Matthew chapter 23 when he said, All of the righteous blood of all of the righteous from righteous Abel unto Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar, he said, All of these things will come upon this generation. So what do we have? We have the prediction of Zion in Isaiah. The establishment of the everlasting kingdom in Zion. Established in full power, full glory at the day of the Lord. When the Lord would arise to shake the earth mightily. But it would be a time of famine. It would be a time of warfare on Israel. When Israel's men would fall by the edge of the sword. It would be at the coming of the glorious branch. The glorious living thing of Yahweh. And it would be in the day in which the blood of the martyrs would be avenged. Folks, here is the time of the consummation of of the kingdom in full power and full glory. The kingdom was born on Pentecost. It was growing and maturing up to that point, but its adversary, its chief opponent, the old covenant temple, the old covenant Zion, would be swept away, leaving the new covenant Zion, the new covenant temple, the new covenant standing in its place, triumphant, manifested as the sons of God, vindicated as the sons of God. Oh my goodness, this is a beautiful, beautiful story. Thank you so much for joining me on this morning's Morning Musings. If you would, please go to my website, get yourself a copy of, the, of my new book, The Resurrection of Daniel 12, verse 2, Fulfilled or Future. This book is a total refutation of the idea of a yet future physical kingdom. In many ways, this will just blow your mind, all right? But again, thank you so much for joining me on this morning's Morning Musings. You have a fantastic weekend, Lord willing. We'll see you on Monday.